This right here is the Blackmagic Design Multidock 10G. Sports up to four SATA SSDs, 2.5 inch form factor, and connects via up to two different 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports. It's rack mountable, 1U, pretty interesting. But my question is, why does it cost $600? Let's find out. Do you feel restricted in your streaming setup? Do you wish that that big mic could come with you or just be smaller, less big, you know? Or do you just want something less in your face? Well, we'll throw the mod mic wireless into your setup and experience streaming freedom like never before. Use it while you're walking, use it while you're talking, use it while in the world of VR, use it while you're on the toilet during your BRB scene, use it while building a PC. You're not tethered anymore. The Mod Mic Wireless, streaming freedom. So checking out what comes inside the box, we have a fairly standard Blackmagic, you know, packaging solution here. All right. We have a little bit of styrofoam. We have a couple notes about DaVinci Resolve, their video editing software. For a little while, with basically any product you buy of theirs over $300, they included a license for DaVinci Resolve on a SD card with the manual. Unfortunately, they have switched to not doing this. They consider it to be wasteful and are trying to reduce e-waste, which I understand. I do keep my SD cards with their stuff on it, and obviously you're getting an older version of Resolve. However, they only have ads here for the free version of DaVinci Resolve. No license feeds, no cloud costs, free. Where's Resolve Studio? There's no download code, there's no note about it, nothing. Just go download the free version. That sucks. I do get a Blackmagic Design sticker. That's my first Blackmagic sticker. Pretty stoked for that, I'm a sticker guy. And then we get, despite the fact that they said, hey, don't get the manual, we get a lot of paperwork to tell us to download the freaking instruction manual. This is incredibly redundant. Anyway, none of this is on point. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed here. Like I said, this is a 1U rack. Well, rack mount device, not a rack itself. And you can see here, we just have, well, four SSD drive bays. These are, of course, SATA bays and they have LED indicator lights around each bay so you know which one's being used at any given time. Got a nice black magic logo around the rack ears and of course you can just mount it just like this because it doesn't weigh very much and you're good to go. Over on the back we do have a standard C15 power plug, two 10 gigabit per second USB type C ports, a mapper of what the button would do here and then you have a switch to switch between dual mode or quad mode which means if it's in the two mode, then the first two SD or SSD slots will go to USB type A and the second two will go to type B or to the second port. So you can have it running to two different computers in a team environment or to one to a NAS, one to your main storage, something like that. Or you could set it to four and have both running out USB type A or USB number A to a single location, which is primarily what I'm going to use at the moment. So. On the surface level, you're not getting a whole lot of craziness. Like, you can get $20 SSD to USB adapters on Amazon, but this one is obviously very built up to be rack mounted and it is going to be significantly more reliable. But I want to take a little peek under the hood. Now, I did say there was nothing special about this or any additional offering. I guess that was technically not fair because what this does offer is the ability to raid these as well. It says you can raid them and so you can take more advantage of that 10 gigabit per second pipe by setting them to raid zero or something. This is this kind of unit is typically used in the broadcast, film, or music industry where you're taking in a lot of data at one time over SSD or you need a easy hot swap you know, RAID setup to manage your files directly off of. We seem to be caught on something here. Like it doesn't want to lift off the power supply. Oh, I'm betting there's one more sticker up under this right here. Aha, I was correct. Missing a screw. Well, I avoided the warranty. Okay, there we go. 
So inside here, we have a fairly simple setup. We've just got four SATA bays, SATA connectors that just plant right onto this little board here. So you have them literally translating to what looks like direct SATA. Actually, these look like mini PCIe slots. These almost look like PCIe 1X slots. That's funny. Power supply input, not gonna touch that, of course. Big old power supply right here. But this is fairly straightforward. It's just these SATA broken out into two. I don't know if you can see that here. There's two USB Type-C chipsets. Now this is where the real, I guess you could say the real money or the real kind of value in this is, is those are going to be some very fast, very high quality USB Type-C chipsets. I can't really see the logo right now. We're looking at GL3590. I'll do a quick image search and see if that actually shows anything worthwhile, but these are going to be very reliable, very stable, very fast uh, USB chipsets, which are very important. You can, this comes down to even in expansion USB cards that you can get, you know, a cheapo $20 USB expander card, but you're going to end up with a very poor experience compared to something like the Sonnet Allegro. I have a video on that coming soon if it hasn't been released already. It was filmed a very long time ago. Um, but that's really all that's in here. It's super simple. So in terms of hardware, you're not missing a whole heck of a lot compared to a basic dock other than, like I said, the reliability, the ability to deploy in a rack. They have sample images of it in a rack mount setup where it's posted above, you know, video monitors, a HyperDeck studio, situations like that where you are recording on the fly regularly to SSDs and need to dump them very, very quickly. It's a very convenient solution. I'm actually rack mounting mine below my desk. And the reason I want to test NAS compatibility is I could get one of these set up in my server rack. I actually run a 24U server rack in my apartment, which manages all of my storage servers and routers and things like that. And I dump a lot of my footage from SSDs to my computer, then to the NAS, or well, straight from the drives to the NAS. And even though I'm on 10 gigabit networking, there's still a little bit of a bottleneck coming from the media over my computer, over the network to the NAS. Whereas this could be a direct option where I just have these four bays set up and then they dump to my NAS automatically. I can literally just plug it in and have the NAS set to directly read the files over to the NAS and then I can manage from there. So if I want to deploy another one of these in my server rack, that would be really handy. I will say for something called a multi-dock, I would love something exactly like this. And maybe you guys in the comments can help me find that as well. I want to see something like this that say has two SATA SSD slots and then a big multi-card reader that has CFast, SD, XC, uh, micro SD, a few different SD slots like my Lexar HR2 hub, but with a whole lot of SD slots and then a couple SSD drives as well. That would be pretty freaking phenomenal. Maybe even a single like USB type C port on the front or type A port here as well. I want a real multi-dock like that. So if you've ever seen anything like that, whether it's rack mounted, desktop set, whatever, do ping me on Twitter or in the comments section. I definitely want to check it out. Now let's install a rack under my desk and get this mounted. All right, so the primary use case for a device like this is at my desk where I am constantly recording and then trying to ingest and mess with footage. And so I wanted it accessible on my desk, but not just sitting there for me to bang into or get in my way or have to stack stuff on top of. I, I've messed with rack mount units before at my desk and it's not cool. I do have a couple rack mount cart thingies where I could where, that I had for audio gear and things like that, but I'm trying to avoid as much floor or shelf space occupants as I can here. And that is where I finally found, thanks to a recommendation from Wendell from Level 1 Techs, a website called Pen Elcom, which sells a bunch of rack mount solutions and hardware and things that IT people probably already know about, but I have looked for for a very long time and never found until now. And so for 19 bucks, they had a 1U rack wall bracket or drawer support to ma either mount on a wall or under a surface. And that's exactly what I needed. And installation was fairly straightforward. You just screw it in, through the holes under your desk, slot it into place, with some, then, then rack mount your unit. So now it's secure under my desk and it's not going anywhere. The only flaw in my plan that I did not think of in advance is that my giant ass desk mat flops over a couple of the slots. So it's a little awkward to get to, but it's fine. And now I've got dust blinky lots. 
So to no one's surprise, just doing normal file management to and from individual disks is normal SATA SSD speeds. It's not magic, it's not going to change that. I did however have an issue with one of my motherboard's USB-C ports detecting it as a USB 2.0 device, so that was pretty slow. Unfortunately, just trying to do a quick test, I don't have a lot of time to dedicate to it. I tried doing a striped volume in Windows Disk Manager across four SSDs and then three SSDs, and it just was rejecting all of it, so I can't get you like a max possible speed, but whatever. So I originally started filming this project back in May, the first month of my new dad life when I still had an abundance of free time as he slept most of the time and it quickly got abandoned. However, this gives me the advantage of being able to wrap up this video with five months of experience with the product, which is an advantage I typically don't get to have with these kind of off the cuff videos. And I have to say, after five months of use, this thing has been a tremendous boon to my workflow for storage and external media management. Now, I will <laughs> I will get ahead of the comments here and, and right off the bat say that I can't sit here and tell any of you really that aren't, you know, in super professional industry fields that over $600 shipped for a four SSD bay makes sense for any of your budgets. Overall, it's a pretty tough price to justify and I understand why you might not be able to. Totally fine, I get it. However, the advantages that it provides for specific workflows could actually be extremely advantageous because previously my strategy was using cheapo USB-C to say to just like direct plugs or dongles which worked out okay some of the time although a lot of the drivers on them kind of didn't cooperate well. You know, it's using USB drivers versus actual SATA chips. And I just, I, I, I had a weird experience with a lot of them. I've tried out quite a few, um, but that was my strategy for a while. In fact, I modded my original main PC case with a USB-C port on the front specifically for that purpose. However, I'm still limited to either getting a bunch of dongles using up all of my USB ports or doing one drive at a time. This has allowed me to manage SSDs from my Ninja Inferno, my Ursa Mini Pro, my Ninja V, as well as an extra drive I use for moving footage between my upstairs computer and my downstairs network because the Wi-Fi isn't fast enough for my hundreds of gigabytes of recordings, and manage all of that like on the fly without needing separate plugs for them. Plus, I do a lot of console soft modding stuff where I put games on SSDs to then put in the consoles, and it is a lot easier to manage from here, especially as I am imaging drives, because I often image. I've actually used this for work projects as well, in that I will take a boot SSD from my test bench, clone it to another SSD, and then spin that up on a separate test bench with basically the same hardware, or create like a generic like Windows image that I use for all of that stuff and clone it between drives, and it is exponentially faster and more convenient to have a dock like this to copy between them than to use the individual adapters or have to open up my computer and plug them in that way or what have you like this it's been a real time saver in that regard and for actual video production workflows i have on occasion actually used its kind of selling point intended um you know use case which is that you have 10 gigabits per second per port because it has the two usb ports to theoretically split up so that each drive could run at its virtually it's max five gigabits per second, not that the SSDs will actually reach that, to actually edit directly from your drive. So if you have four SSDs you used in a big recording, which I have done before, you could leave all your footage on those drives and start editing immediately if you need to quit get some dailies out or if you need you know, a quick edit or a quick look at things. It has the speed to back it up and it has individual SATA chips per drive so that you don't have to de deal with any of the driver weirdness that I ran into while still being plug and play and completely agnostic to what software or hardware you're using. There's also a use case I've started using for it where you can just use it as a dedicated recording drive and in fact it's even compatible with one of their HyperDeck 8K things that I'll never afford uh, for d recording directly to it or even striping the recording across the drives which is pretty freaking cool so I can actually I can't utilize this a ton in my current setup, but I'm picturing a future desk we're actually potentially moving soon, a potential desk rework in which this is also connected with the second port to my gaming PC, and I can actually record that footage directly to it, and even with a flip of a switch, switch that back to my main PC and have the footage right there, which would be a huge time saver as well. There are, however, a couple kind of workflow things that I wish this had available, in that I wish the switch to switch it between dual output or separate split output switch that's on the back was on the front. 
Because if you, like, I, I, I see a lot of workflow potential where you'd want to be able to change that. And it's not there. Now, I see why I guess that's a moot point now that I say that. Because if you did want to change that, you'd also have to change where the plugs are on the back. So you'd already have access up to the back for it. But at the same time, if you left it connected to two PCs, you could still flip it to where they all go to, like, output A on your one computer and then flip it to where the second plug is already routed to output B and have it split up that way. I see that being very beneficial. I also wish it supported like when you disable the second output for splitting up the drives that you could set that as a USB-C pass through because when you're using the drives like that most of the time they're not being used you know most of the time the thing sits under my desk and is not in you know active use writing its max bandwidth of data to the drives so it would be extremely beneficial to be able to daisy chain USB-C through it with that extra port not being used so I wish that was a thing as well like I said overall for most of you I probably can't justify and sit here and tell you to spend over six hundred dollars on an SSD a SATA SSD dock at that however I, hopefully I can identify some workflows here where that might actually be useful and otherwise check out a weird kind of niche industry product that we don't get to talk about a lot on the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm glad to finally be wrapping it up. I have no clue what footage I will cover this voiceover with, but hope you have a great rest of your day or week or whatever. Hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'll see you in the next one.